ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Geyer Performing Arts Center for this production of Doubt a Parable, presented by actors and artists of Fayette County and directed by Earl L. Christopher. <coughs> Please make note of the emergency exits located on the left, right, and back of the theater. Please refrain from using all cell phones and other electronic devices, as these are not only distracting to our actors, but your fellow audience members as well. Flash photography and videotaping of this production is strictly prohibited. There will be no intermission. The guy Auxiliary will be serving light refreshments after the show in the hospitality suite upstairs. All we are asking is a small donation. Our next production, presented by the Guy Performing Arts Center, is Jesus Christ Superstar, running April 5th through 8th, directed by Ben Wren. Coming April 21st, AAFC will be presenting A Hard Day's Night, a Beatles tribute. This is a fundraising event for AAFC, so get your tickets now. And now, sit back, relax, and enjoy Doubt a Parable. What do you do when you're not sure? That's the topic of my sermon today. You look for God's direction and can't find it. Last year, when President Kennedy was assassinated, who among us did not experience the most profound disorientation? Despair. What now? Which way? What do I say to my kids? What do I tell myself? It was a time of people sitting together, bound together by a common feeling of hopelessness. But think of that. Your bond with your fellow being was your despair. It was a public experience shared by everyone in our society. It was awful, but we were in it together. How much worse is it then for the lone man, the lone woman, stricken by a private calamity. No one knows I'm sick. No one knows I've lost my last real friend. No one knows I've done something wrong. Imagine the isolation. You see the world as through a window. On one side of the glass, happy, untroubled people, and on the other side, you. Something has happened, you have to carry it, and it's incommunicable. For those so afflicted, only God knows their pain, their secret. The secret of their alienating sorrow. And when such a person, as they must, howls to the sky to God, help me! What if no answer? 
answer comes. <coughs> Silence. I want to tell you a story. A cargo ship sank, and all of her crew was drowned. Only this one sailor survived. He made a raft of some spars, and being of a nautical discipline, turned his eyes to the heavens and read the stars. He set a course for his home, and exhausted, fell asleep. Clouds rolled in, blanketed the sky. For the next 20 nights, as he floated on the vast ocean, he could no longer see the stars. He thought he was on course, but there was no way to be certain. As the days rolled on, and he wasted away with fevers, thirst, and starvation, he began to have doubts. Had he set his course right? Was he still going on towards his home? Or was he horribly lost and doomed to a terrible death? <coughs> no way to know. The message of the constellations, had he imagined it because of his desperate circumstance, or had he seen the truth once and now had to hold on to it without further reassurance? That was his dilemma on a voyage without apparent end. There are those of you in church today who know exactly the crisis of faith I describe. And I want to say to you, doubt can be a bond as powerful and sustaining as certainty. When you are lost, you are not alone. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, Amen. Sister James. Who's watching your class? Oh, they're in heaven. They're in art. Art. A waste of time. Well, it's only for an hour a week. Uh, much can be accomplished in 60 minutes. Yes, sister. Uh, I, I wondered if I might know what you did about William London. I sent him home. Oh, dear. So he's still bleeding? Oh, yes. His nose just bled loose and started gushing during the Pledge of Allegiance. Was it spontaneous? Well, what else would it be? Self-induced. You mean... You think he might have intentionally given himself a nosebleed? Exactly. No. You are a very innocent person, Sister James. William London is a restless boy, and uh, he will do whatever it takes if you do not keep right on him to escape his chair. Set his foot on fire for half a day of school. But, but, but why? He has a restless mind. No, but that's good. No, it's not. His father's a policeman, and the last thing he wants is a rowdy boy. William London is headed for trouble. Puberty has got a hold of him. Soon he will be imagining all the wrong things. I strongly suspect he will not graduate high school. But that is beyond our jurisdiction. We simply need to get him through, out the door, and then he is someone else's project. Ordinarily, I assign my most seasoned sisters to the eighth grade class, but I'm working within constraints. Are you in control of your class? I think so. Usually, more children are sent down to me. Well, I try to take care of things myself. If that can be an error. You are answerable to me. I to the Monsignor, he to the Bishop, and so on up to the Holy Father. There is a chain of discipline. Make use of it. Yes, sister. How is Donald Muller doing? Steady. Good. Has anyone hit him? No. Good. And that girl, Linda Conte, you seated her away from the boys, as far as space permits, but well, it doesn't do much good. You just get her through intact. So, should I go? Is something
something the matter? Why? Is something the matter? I don't think so. Well, then nothing's the matter then. Well, thank you, sister. I just wanted to check on William's nose. He had a ballpoint pen. Excuse me, sister? William London had a ballpoint pen. He was fiddling with it while he waited for his mother. He was not using it for assignments, I hope. No, of course not. I'm sorry I allowed him cartridge pens into this school. Students really should only be using fountain pens to learn script. Always the easy way out these days. But what does that teach? Every easy choice today will have its consequence tomorrow. Mark my word. Yes, Mister. Ballpoints make you press down. They press down, they write like monkeys. Well, I don't allow them ballpoint pens. Good. Penmanship is dying all across the country. Well, you have some time. Sit down. We might as well have a talk. I've been meaning to talk to you. I observed your lesson on the New Deal earlier in the school term. Not bad, but I caution you. Do not idealize Franklin Delano Roosevelt, who was a good president. But he did attempt to pack the Supreme Court. I do not approve of making heroes of lay historical figures. If you want to talk about saints, do it in religion. Yes, sister. Also, I question your enthusiasm for history. Oh, but I love history. That is exactly my meaning. You favor history and risk swaying the children to value it above their other subjects. I think this is a mistake. I never thought of that. Well, I'll try to treat my other lessons with more enthusiasm. No, give them their history without putting sugar all over it. That's the point. Now, tell me about your class. How would you characterize the condition of 8B? I don't really know where to begin. What do you want to know? Well, let's begin with Stephen Inzio. Stephen Inzio, uh, oh, he has the highest marks in class. Noreen Horan. Mm -hmm. Second highest. Brenda McNulty. Third highest. You see, sister, I know Stephen Inzio, Noreen Horan, and Brenda McNulty are one, two, and three in your class. School-wide, we have 48 such students in each grade period. I make it my business to know all 48 of their names. I do not say this to aggrandize myself, but to illustrate the importance of paying attention. You must pay attention as well, Sister James. Yes, Sister. I cannot be everywhere. Am I falling short? Those students with the highest marks in your class, are they the most intelligent children in your class? No, I, I wouldn't say they are, but, well, they work the hardest. Very good. That's right. That's the ethic. What good is a gift if it's left in the box? What good is a high IQ if you're staring out the window with your mouth agape? Be hard on the bright ones, Sister James. Don't be charmed by cleverness. Not theirs. And not yours. You are a competent teacher, Sister James. But perhaps not our best. The best teachers do not perform. They cause the students to perform. Do I perform? As if on a Broadway stage. Oh dear, I, I had no conception. You're showing off. You like to see yourself ten feet tall in their eyes. Another thing occurs to me. Where were you before? Mount St. Margaret's. All girls. Yes. I feel I need to remind you. Boys are made of gravel, soot, and tar paper. Boys are a different breed. I feel I know how to handle them. Oh, perhaps you are wrong. Perhaps you are not working hard enough. Oh. No tears. I thought you were satisfied with me. This satisfaction is a vice. Do you have a handkerchief? Yes. Do you use it? Nosebleed. Be skeptical. 
Do not let a little blood fuddle your judgment. God gave you a heart and a brain. Your heart is warm, but your wits must be cold. Liars should be frightened to lie to you. They should be uncomfortable in your presence. I doubt they are. I don't know. I never thought about it. Children should think you see right through them. Well, wouldn't that be a little frightening? Only to those who are up to no good. But I want my students to feel as if they can talk to me. They're children. They can talk to each other. It's more important they have a fierce moral guardian. You stand at the door, sister. You are the gatekeeper. If you are vigilant, they will not need to be. I'm just not sure what you want me to do. And if anything occurs in your classroom, which you sense requires understanding, and you do not understand, come to me. Yes, sister. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm the principal of this school. Do you stay when the specialty instructors come in? Yes. And yet you're here while art is going on? Well, I was a little concerned about William's nose. Right. So art meets in class. She comes in, Miss Bell. Yes. And you take the students to the basement for dance with Mrs. Shields? On Thursdays. Mm -hmm. Another waste of time. Oh, but everybody loves the Christmas pageant. I don't love it. Frankly, it offends me. Last year, the girl playing Our Lady was wearing lipstick. I was waiting in the wings for that little jade. Then there's music. Yes, that strange woman with the portable piano. What's the matter with her neck? Some kind of goiter, poor woman. Yes, Mrs. Carolyn. That's right. We used to have sisters teach that. Not enough sisters. What else? Um, physical education and religion. And for that, we have Father Flynn. <laughs> Two hours a week. Do you stay for those? Mostly, unless I have reports to fill out or if I have to What do you it? think of Father Flynn? Oh, uh, well, he's a brilliant man. What a speaker. <laughs> yes, this past Sunday's sermon was poetic. <laughs> and he's actually very good, too, at teaching basketball. I, I was surprised. I wouldn't think a man of the cloth, the personality type for basketball, but he has a way he has, very natural at dribbling and shooting. <laughs> what do you think it was about? What? Uh, this past Sunday's sermon. Uh, what, what do you think he was speaking about? Uh, oh, doubt. He was talking about doubt. Why? Excuse me, sister? Well, sermons come from somewhere, don't they? Is Father Flynn in doubt? Is he concerned that someone else is in doubt? Well, I suppose you'd have to ask him. Oh, no, that would not be appropriate. He's my superior. If Father Flynn's troubled, he should confess it to the Monsignor or fellow priest. We do not share intimate information with priests. I, I am a little concerned. A about what? The time? Art should be over in a few minutes. I should be heading up. Have you noticed anything, Sister James? About what? I want you to be alert. Oh, I, I'm not sure that I'm following you, Sister. I'm sorry I can't be more forthright. It's just that I don't want to create a situation by saying it. I can only say that I'm concerned, perhaps needlessly, about matters here at St. Nicholas School. Academically? Isn't it fighting a guessing game? I want you to pay attention to your class. Well, of course I'll pay attention to my class, sister. And, well, I'll try not to perform, and I will try to be less innocent. I'm sorry that you were disappointed in me, but please know that I will try my best, honestly. Look at you. You trade anything for a warm look. I'm telling you here and now, I want to see the starch in your character cultivated. If you're looking for reassurance, you can be easily fooled. But if you forget yourself, study others. You will not be fooled. It's important. Now, one final matter, and then you really must go. Sister Veronica is going blind. Oh, how horrible. This is not generally known, and I don't want it known. If they find out in the rectory, she'll be gone. I can't afford to lose her. But now, if you see her making her way down the stone stairs into the courtyard, for the love of heaven, Lightly take her hand, as if in fellowship, and see that she does not destroy herself. Go on, go.
psychological. The rest of the game, you're cooperating with your teammates, you're competing against the other team. But at the foul line, it's you against yourself. And the danger is, you start to think. When you think, you stop breathing. Your body locks up, so you have to remember to relax. Take a breath. <laughs> Unlock your knees. This is something for you to watch. Jimmy, you stand like a parking meter. Come up with a routine of what you do. Shift your weight. Move your hips. <laughs> you think that's funny, Ralph? What's funny is you never get in the foul shot. Don't worry if you look silly. They won't think you're silly if you get the basket. Come up with the routine, concentrate on the routine, and you'll forget you get tensed up. Now, on another matter, I've noticed several of you guys have dirty nails. And I don't want to see that. I'm not talking about the length of your nails, I'm, I'm talking about cleanliness. See, <coughs> look at my nails. They're long, I like them a little long. But look at how clean they are. That makes it okay. There's a kid I grew up with, Timmy Matheson. Never had clean nails. He'd stick his fingers up his nose, in his mouth. It's a true story, learn to listen. He got spinal meningitis. Died, horrible death. Sometimes it's the little things that get you. You try to talk to a girl with those filthy paws, Mr. Conroy, she's going to take off like she's being chased by the red Chinese. <laughs> all right, all right, you guys. What am I going to do with you? Get dressed. Come on over to the rectory. Have some Kool-Aid and cookies. We'll have a bowl session. Sister. Good morning, Sister James. Mr. McGinn pruned this bush, which was the right thing to do, but he neglected to protect it from the frost. Have we had a frost? When it comes, it's too late. You know about gardening? A little. Where's your class? Oh, the girls are in music. And the boys? They're in the rectory with Father Flynn. Oh, Father Flynn. What are they doing? Oh, uh, he's giving them a talk. On what subject? How to be a man? sisters were permitted in the rectory, I would be interested in hearing that talk. <laughs> I don't know how to be a man. I don't know what's all involved. Have you ever given a talk to the girls on how to be a woman? Oh, no. Uh, I, I wouldn't be competent. Why not? I just don't think I would be. Uh, I took my vows at the beginning, before, at the beginning. The founder of our order, the Blessed Mother Seed, was married and had five children before embarking on her vows. I often wondered how she managed so much in one life. Life is perhaps longer than you think. The dictates of the soul are more numerous. I was married. You were? <laughs> you could at least try to hide your astonishment. I'm sorry, I didn't know. He was, <clears throat> excuse me, when one takes on the habit, one must Close the door on secular things. He was killed in the war against Adolf Hitler. Really? Excuse me, sister. But I'm like you. I'm not sure I would feel competent to lecture tittering girls on the subject of womanhood. I don't come to this garden often. What is it, 40 feet across? Convent here, the rectory there. Might as well be divided by the Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> I used to putter around out here, 
But Monsignor Benedict does his reverie at quixotic times, and we are rightfully discouraged from crossing paths with priests unattended. He is 79, but nevertheless. The Monsignor is very good, isn't he? Yes, but he's oblivious. To what? I don't believe he knows who's President of the United States. Uh, I mean him no disrespect, of course. It's just that he's otherworldly, to the extreme. Is it that he's innocent, Sister Aloysius? You have a slyness about you, <coughs> Sister James. Be careful of it. How is your class? How is Donald Muller doing? Oh, um, he's 13th in class. I know. That's sufficient. Is he being accepted? He has no friends. I suppose that would be a lot to ask after only two months. Has anyone hit him? No. Someone will. And when they do, send them right down to me. I'm not so sure that anyone will. We have a statue of St. Patrick on one side of the altar and a statue of St. Anthony on the other. Our parish serves Irish and Italian families. Someone will hit Donald Miller. He has a protector. Who? Father Flynn. What? Uh, well, he's taken an interest since Donald went on the altar boys. I thought I should tell you. I told you to come to me, but I hoped you never would. Maybe I shouldn't have. I knew once you did, something would be set in motion. So it's happened. What? Oh, no, I'm not telling you that. I I'm not even certain what you mean. Oh, yes, you are. I've been trying to become more cold in my thinking. As you suggested, sister, I had the most terrible dream last night. I feel as if I've lost my way a little, Sister Aloysius. I want to be guided by you and, and responsible to the children, but I, I want my peace of mind. I must tell you, I've been longing for the return of my peace of mind. You may not have it. It's not your place to be complacent. That's for the children. That's what we give them. I feel as if I'm starting to understand you a little, sister, but it's so unsettling to look at things and people with suspicion. It feels as if I'm less close to God. When one takes steps to address wrongdoing, one does step away from God. But in his service, dealing with such matters is hard and thankless work. I I've become more reserved in class, but I feel separated from the children. But that's as it should be. But I feel wrong. and. About this other matter, I don't have any evidence. I'm not at all certain that anything's happened. Well, we can't wait for that. Well, what if it's nothing? Well, then it's nothing, then. Wouldn't mind being wrong. But I doubt I am. Then what's to be done? I don't know. No, you'll know what to do. I don't know what to do. There are certain parameters which hinder me and protect him. But he can't be safe if it's established. I, I doubt he could recover from the shame. What have you seen? I don't know. What have you seen? He took Donald to the rectory. What for? A talk? Alone? Yes. When? A week ago. Why didn't you tell me? I didn't think that there was anything wrong with it. It never came into my mind that he... that there could be anything wrong. All the children. Donald Muller. Oh, I suppose it makes sense. How does it make sense? He's isolated. The little sheep lagging behind is the one the wolf goes for. I don't know that anything's wrong. First Negro student. I thought there could be fighting. A parent or two to deal with. I should have foreseen this possibility. How could you imagine it? It's my job to outshine the fox in cleverness. That's my job. But maybe it's nothing. Then why do you look like you've just seen the devil? It's just the way the boy acted when he came back to class. Did he say something? No. It was his expression. He looked frightened. And he put his head on his desk in the most peculiar way. And one other thing. I think there was alcohol on his breath. There was alcohol on his breath. Eight years ago, St. Boniface, we had a priest who had to be stopped. But I had Monsignor Scully then, whom I could rely on. Here, there's no man I can turn to, and men run everything. We are going to have to stop him ourselves. But well, can't you just report your suspicions? To Monsignor Benedict? The man's guileless. He would simply ask Father Flynn. But would that be such a bad thing? And he would believe 
whatever Father Flynn told him. He would consider the matter settled. Oh, but maybe that's all that needs to be done, if it's true. If I had done something wrong and I was confronted with it, I would be so repentant. Sister James, my dear, you must try to imagine a very different kind of person than yourself. A man who would do this has already denied a great deal. If I tell Monsignor Benedict, and he is satisfied with Father Flynn's rebuttal, the matter is suppressed. Well then, tell the bishop. The hierarchy of the church does not permit my going to the bishop. No. If I tell the Monsignor, it's out of my hands. I'm helpless. I'm going to have to come up with a pretext. Get Father Flynn to my office. Try to force it. You'll have to be there. Me? No, why, sister, no, I couldn't. I can't be closeted alone with a priest. Another sister must be in attendance, and it has to be you. The circle of confidence cannot be made any wider. Think of the boy if this gets out. I can't do it. Why not? Squeamish. Uh, I'm not equipped. I would be embarrassed. I, I couldn't possibly be present if the topic was spoken of. Please, Sister James, do not indulge yourself in willless adolescent scruples. I assure you, I would prefer a more seasoned confederate, but you are the one who came to me. You've told me to. Would you rather leave the boy to be exploited? And this won't be the only story. If you close your eyes, you will be party to all that comes after. You are supposed to tell the Monsignor. That you saw a look in the boy's eyes. That perhaps you smelled something on his breath. <clears throat> Monsignor Benedict thinks the sun rises and sets with Father Flynn. He would have you branded and hysteric and transferred. But we can just ask him. Who? The boy, Donald Muller? He'd deny it. Oh, why? Shame. No, you can't know that. And if he does point the finger, how do you think that will be received in this community? A black child. We'd have to think this through. I'm going to invite Father Flynn to my office. An unrelated, unrelated matter. You will be there. But what good can I do? Aside from the unacceptability of a priest and a nun being alone, I need a witness. To what? He may tell the truth and lie afterwards. <coughs> oh, the boys are coming out of the rectory. Well, they look happy enough. They look smug, like they have a secret. There he is. If I could, Sister James, I would certainly choose to live in innocence. But innocence can only be wisdom. In a world without evil, situations arise, and we are confronted with wrongdoing and the need to act. I have to take the boys back up to class. Very well, then take them. <coughs> we'll be talking to you. Storm we had last night? No, I didn't know there was great wind in Ireland. You were there for it. How fascinating. Uh, yes, I was wondering if you would be so kind as to remove a tree limb that's fallen in the courtyard. Sister Veronica tripped over it and fell on her face. Oh, she's fine. She doesn't look any worse. Thank you, Mr. McGinn. Come in. Good morning, 
Sister Aloysius. How are you today? Good morning, Father Flynn. Very good, thank you. Uh, good of you to come by. Are we ready for the meeting? We're just short, Sister James. <clears throat> did you hear the wind last night? I certainly did. Uh, imagine what it must have been like in uh, the frontier days when a man alone in the woods sat by a fire in, in his buckskins and listened to a sound like that. Imagine the loneliness Immense darkness pressing in. How frightening it must have been. I imagine if one lacked faith in God's protection, it would be frightening. Did I hear Sister Veronica had an accident? Yes, and she fell over a piece of wood and practically killed herself. Is she all right? Oh, she's fine. Sight isn't good, is it? Her sight's fine. Nuns fall, you know. No, I didn't know that. It's the habit. Catches us up more often than not. What with our being dressed in black and white and so prone to falling, we're more like dominoes than anything else. <laughs> oh. Am I past the time? Not at all. Sister Aloysius and I were just having a nice chat. Oh, good afternoon, Father. Uh, good morning, Sister. I'm sorry that I was delayed. I, I ran into Mr. McGinn, and he, he had closed the courtyard to fix something, so I had to go back in through the convent and out the side door, and, and then I ran into Sister Veronica. How is she? She has a bit of a bloody nose. I'm beginning to think you're punching people. <laughs> Sister? The incident with... Never mind. Come in. Sit down. I actually have a hot pot of tea. Tea. Would you like a cup of tea, Father? I would love a cup of tea. Would you mind serving him, Sister James? Oh, of course. And yourself, of course. Would you like some tea, Sister? Oh, no. I've already had mine. Uh, is there sugar? Sugar? Oh, yes. Uh, I put it away in a drawer here for Lent last year and never remembered to take it out. It mustn't have been much to give up, then. No, I suppose you're right. Well, here it is. I'll serve you, though. Sure. Want to practice, Simon? Uh, one? Uh, three. Your fingernails. I wear them a little long. The sugar. Oh. Yes, one. Three. Three? Sweet tooth. Sermon. You have one, just now. I get them all the time. 
Unfortunate. I forget them, so I write them down. What is the idea? <laughs> Intolerance. <laughs> oh, would you like some more tea, Father Flynn? Not yet. Uh, I think a message of the Second Ecumenical Council was that the church needs to take on a more familiar face. Uh, reflect the local community. We should sing a song from the radio now and then. Take the kids out for ice cream. Maybe ice take cream. the boys on a camping trip. We should be friendly. The, the children and their parents should see us as members of their family rather than emissaries from Rome. I think the pageant should be charming, like a community theater doing a show. But we're not members of their family. We're different. Why? Because of our vows. Precisely. I don't think we're so different. You know I would take some more tea, sister. Thank you. But they think we're different. The working class members of this parish trust us to be different. I think we're getting off the subject. Yes. You're right. Back to it. The Christmas pageant. We must be careful how we use Donald Miller in the pageant. You see there, sister. You don't oh, smell. Yes, Father. Now, uh, what about Donald Miller? We must be careful in the pageant that we neither hide Donald Miller nor put him forward. Because of the color of the skin. Yes, that's Why? right. Come now, Father, you're being disingenuous. I think he should be treated like every other boy. You yourself singled him out for special attention. You held a private meeting with him at the rectory a week ago? Uh, yes. He, what are we talking about? Uh, Donald Muller? He acted strangely when he returned to class. He did? Oh, uh, when he returned from the rectory, a little odd, yes. Uh, can you tell us why? How did he act strangely? I, I don't really know how to describe it. Um, well, he put his head on his desk. Uh, uh, you mean you had some impression? Yes. And he'd just come from the rectory, so you're asking me if I know anything about it. That's it. Oh. Did you want to discuss the pageant? Is that why I'm here, or is this what you wanted to discuss? This. Well, I feel a little uncomfortable. Why? Why do you think? Something about your tone. I would prefer a discussion of fact rather than tone. Well, if I had judged my conversation with Donald Muller to be of concern to you, sister, I would have sat you down and talked with you about it, but I did not judge it to be of concern to you. Well, perhaps you are mistaken. In your understanding of what concerns me, <clears throat> this boy is in my school, and his well-being is my responsibility. His well-being is not an issue. I'm not satisfied that that is true. He was upset when he returned to class. Did he say something? No. What happened in the rectory? It happened. Nothing happened. I had a talk with a boy. About what? It was a private matter. He's 12 years old. What could be private? I'll say it again, sister. I object to your tone. This is not about my tone or your tone, Father Flynn. It's about arriving at the truth. Of what? You know what I'm talking about, don't you? You're controlling the expression on your face right now, aren't you? On my face? You said you wanted to talk about the pageant, sister, and that's why I'm here. Am I to understand that you brought me into your office to confront me in some way? It's outrageous. I'm not answerable to you. What exactly are you accusing me of? I'm not accusing you of anything, Father Flynn. I'm asking you to tell me what happened in the rectory. I don't wish to continue this conversation at all further. And if you were dissatisfied with that, I suggest you speak to Monsignor Benedict. I can only imagine your unfortunate behavior this morning is the result of overwork. Perhaps you need a leave of absence. I may suggest it. Have a good morning. Sister? Good morning, Father. There was alcohol on his breath when he returned from his meeting with you. Alcohol? I did smell it on his breath. Well, can't you let this alone? No. See, there's no way out of this. Uh, uh, take your time, Father. Would you like some more tea? You should have let it alone. Not possible. Donald Muller served as altar boy last Tuesday morning. After Mass, Mr. McGinn caught him in the sacristy drinking altar wine. When I found out, I sent for him. There were tears. He begged not to be removed from the altar boys, and I took pity on him. I told him if no one else find out, found out, I would let him stay on. What a relief. That explains everything. 
Thanks be to God, sister. Look, it's all been a mistake. And if I talk to Mr. McGinn? Talk to Mr. McGinn, by all means. But now that the boy's secret's out, I'm going to have to remove him from the altar boys, which I think is too bad. That's what I was trying to avoid. You were trying to protect the boy. That's right. I might have done the same thing. Sister, is there any way that Donald can stay on the altar boys? No. If the boy drank altar wine, he cannot continue as an altar boy. Of course. You're right. I'm just not the disciplinarian you are, sister. And he is the only Negro in the school that did affect my thinking on the matter. It will be commented on that he's no longer serving at Mass. It's a public thing. You know, a certain ignorant element of the parish will be confirmed in their beliefs. He must be held to the same standard as the others. Of course. Do you want to discuss the pageant, or was that no, just... this was the issue. Are you satisfied? Yes. Then I'll be going. I have some writing to do. Intolerance. That's right. I'm not pleased with how you handled this, sister. Next time you are troubled by dark ideas, I suggest you speak to the Monsignor. Well, what a relief. He cleared it all up. Do you believe him? Of course. Isn't it that it's easier to believe him? <clears throat> no, but we can corroborate his story with Mr. McGinn. Oh, yes. These types of people are clever. Not so easily undone. Well, I'm convinced. You're not. You just want the matter resolved so you can have simplicity back. I want no further part in this. I will bring him down, with or without your help. How can you be so sure that he's lying? Experience. You just don't like him. You don't like it that he uses a ballpoint pen. You don't like it that he takes three lumps of sugar in his tea and you don't like it that he likes Frosty the Snowman, and you are letting that convince you of something terrible. Just terrible. Well, I like Frosty the Snowman. And I think it would be nice if the school were run like a prison. And I think it's a good thing that I like to teach history, and that I might inspire my students to love it too. And if you judge that to mean that I am unfit to be a teacher, then so be it. Sit down. In ancient Sparta, Important matters were determined by who shouted the loudest. Fortunately, we are not in ancient Sparta. Now, do you honestly find the students at this school to be treated like inmates at a prison? No. No, I, I don't actually. By and large, they seem to be fairly happy, but they are all uniformly terrified of you. Yes, that's how it works. This is Sister Aloysius Bouvier, Principal of St. Nicholas. Is this Mrs. Muller? Yes, I'm calling concerning your son, Donald. I would like you and your husband to come down for a talk. When would be convenient? gossiping with a friend about a man she hardly knew. I know none of you have ever done this. That night, she had a dream. A great hand appeared over her, <clears throat> pointed down at her. She was immediately seized by an overwhelming sense of guilt. The next day, she went to confession. She got the old parish priest, Father O'Rourke, and she told him the whole thing. Is gossiping a sin? She asked the old man. 
Was that the hand of God Almighty pointing a finger at me? Should I be asking your absolution? Father, tell me, have I done something wrong? Yes! Father O'Rourke answered her. Yes, you ignorant, battling rotta female! You have borne false witness against your neighbor. You have played fast and loose with his reputation, and you should be heartily ashamed. So the woman said she was sorry and asked forgiveness. Not so fast, says O'Rourke. I want you to go home, take a pillow upon your roof, cut it open with a knife, and return here to me. So the woman went home, took the pillow from her bed, a knife from the drawer, went up the fire escape to the roof, and stabbed the pillow. Then she returned to the old priest as instructed. Did you cut the pillow with the knife? He says. Yes, father, she said. And what was the result? Feathers, she said. Feathers, he repeated. Feathers everywhere, father. Now, I want you to go back and gather up every last feather that flew out on the wind. Well, she said, it, it can't be done. I, I, I don't know where they went. The winds took them all over. And that, said Father O'Rourke, is gossip. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Good afternoon, Sister James. Oh, good afternoon, Father. Is that bird complaining about? What kind of bird is that? A starling? A grackle? A crow? Of course. Are you praying? I, I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, I'm not praying, no. You seem subdued. I can't sleep. Hmm. Why not? Bad dreams. Actually, one bad dream, and then I haven't slept right since. What about? I looked in a mirror and there was a darkness where my face should be. It frightened me. I can't sleep on occasion? No. Do you see that big hand pointing a finger at you? Yes, sometimes. Was your sermon directed at anybody in particular? What do you think? Did you make up that story about the pillow? Yes, you make up little stories to illustrate in the tradition of the parable. Aren't the things that actually happen in life more worthy of interpretation than a, a made-up story? No. What happens in life is beyond interpretation. The truth makes for a bad sermon. It tends to be confusing and have no clear conclusion. <clears throat> I received a letter from my brother in Maryland yesterday. He's very sick. Maybe you should go and see him. I can't leave my class. How's Donald Muller doing? I don't know. You don't see him? I see him every day, but I don't know how he's doing. I, I don't know how to judge these things now. I stopped speaking to him for fear of it being misunderstood. Isn't that a shame? I actually avoided him when I might have passed him in the hall the other day. He doesn't understand why. I noticed you didn't come to me for confession. No, I'm... I went to Monsignor Benedict. He's very kind. I wasn't? No, it, it wasn't that. As you know. You know why. You're against me. No. You're not convinced. It, it's not for me to be convinced one way or the other. It's Sister Aloysius. Are you just an extension of her? She is my superior. But what about you? I wish I knew nothing whatever about it. I, I wish the thought had never entered my mind. How did it enter your mind? Sister Aloysius? I feel as if my reputation has been damaged through no fault of my own. 
yet I'm reluctant to take the steps necessary to repair it for fear of doing further harm. It's frustrating, I can tell you that. Is it true? What? You know what I'm asking. No, it's not true. I don't know what to believe. How can you take sides against me? It doesn't matter. It does matter. I've done nothing. There's no substance to any of this. The most innocent actions can appear sinister to the poison mind. I had to throw that poor boy off the altar. He's devastated. The only reason I haven't gone to the Monsignor is I don't want to tear apart the school. Sister Aloysius would most certainly lose her position as principal if I made her accusations known since they're baseless. And you might lose your place as well. Are you threatening me? What do you take me for? No! I want to believe you. Then do! It's as simple as that! It's not me that has to be convinced! I don't have to prove anything to her! She is determined to what? Protect the boy! It's me that cares about that boy! Not her! Have you ever seen her reach out a hand to that child or any child in this school? She's like a block of ice! Children need warmth, kindness, understanding. What does she give them? Rules. That black boy needs a helping hand, or he's not going to make it here. But if she gets her way, he'll be left to his own undoing. Why do you think he was in the sacristy drinking wine that day? He's in trouble. She sees me talk in a human way to these children, and she immediately assumes there's something wrong with it, something dirty. Well, I'm not going to let her keep this parish in the dark ages, and I'm not going to let her destroy my spirit of I'm compassion. I'm sure that's I all your intention. I care about this congregation like you, you care do. about your class. You love them, don't you? Yes, that's natural. I, I, I can look at your face and know your philosophy. Kindness. I don't know. I, I mean, of course. What is Sister Aloysius' philosophy, do you suppose? I don't have to suppose. She's told me. She discourages warmth. She suggested I be more formal. There are people who go after your humanity, Sister James, who tell you the light in your heart is, is weakness, that your soft feelings betray you. I don't believe that. It's an old tactic of cruel people to kill kindness in the name of virtue. Don't believe it. There's nothing wrong with love. Of course not. And to what that was the message of the Savior to us all. Love. Not suspicion, disapproval, and judgment. Love of people. Found Sister Aloysius a positive inspiration? I don't want to misspeak, but no. She's taken away my joy of teaching, and I love teaching more than anything. It's all right. It's, it's going to be all right. I just feel as if everything is upside down. It isn't, though. There are just times in life when we feel lost. You're not alone with it. It happens to many of us. A bond. I should go in. I'm sorry your brother is ill. Thank you, Father. I don't believe it. You don't? No. Thank you, sister. It's a great relief to me. Thank you very much.
between us. I was listening to this transistor radio with an earpiece. Look how tiny they're making them now. I confiscated it from one of the students. I can't stop using it. You like music? Oh, not really. News reports. Years ago, I used to listen to all the news reports when my husband was away in Italy in, in the war. <coughs> when I came into possession of this little radio, I found myself doing it again. Though there is no war, the voices have changed. You were a married woman? Yes. But then he was killed. <clears throat> so, is your husband coming? Couldn't get on board. I see, of course. It was a lot to ask. How is Donald doing? Oh, well, he's has average grades. He's passing his subjects. That's good. He was upset about being taken off the altar boys. It, yes. Did he explain why? He said he was caught kind of drinking wine. That is the reason. Well, that seems fair. But he's a good boy, sister. He fell down there, but he's a good boy, pretty much down the line. And he knows what an opportunity he has here. I just think the whole thing was a bit much for him. What do you mean, the whole thing? He's the only killer here, and he's the first in the school. <coughs> That'd be a lot for a boy. Uh, I suppose it would. But he has to do the work of the others, of course. Well, he is doing it, though, isn't he? He's getting by. He's getting through. How is he at home? His father beat the hell out of him over that wine. Oh, he shouldn't do that. You don't tell my husband what to do. You just stand back. He didn't want Donald to come here. Why not? He thought he'd have problems with the other boys, but that hasn't happened as far as I can make up. Good. Oh, but that priest, Father Flynn, he's been watching out for him. Yes. Have you met Father Flynn? No, not exactly. I've seen him on the altar, but not face to face. Just, you know, her from Donald. What does he say? Oh, Father Flynn, Father Flynn. He watches out for him. The boy needs his time, and that's what he gives him, his time. He needs it. Um, Mrs. Miller, we may have a problem. Well, I thought you might have had a reason for asking me in here. Principal's a big job. If you're stopping your day to ask, ask me something, it must be something. I just want to say, though. Just told you. Excuse me. Whatever the problem is, Donald just has to make it here till June. And then he's off to high school. Right. If Donald can graduate from here, he can get into a good high school, and then he has an opportunity at college. He has the intelligence. I believe he has the intelligence, <coughs> and he wants it too. I don't see anything at this time standing in the way of his graduating with his class. Well, that's all I care about. Anything else is all right with me. I doubt that. Try me. I'm concerned about the relationship between Father Flynn and your son. You don't say. Concerned. What do you mean, concerned? That it may not be right. Uh-huh. Well, there's something wrong with everybody, isn't there? you got to be forgiving. I'm concerned, to be frank, that Father Flynn may have made advances on your son. May have made. I can't be certain. No evidence? No. Well, maybe there's nothing to it. I, I think there is something to it. I prefer not to see it that way if you don't mind. I can understand that this may be difficult to hear. I believe that Father Finn gave Donald that altar wine. So why would he do that? Has Donald been acting strangely? No. Anything out of the ordinary? He's been himself. All right. Look, sister, I don't want any problems, and I feel like you're on the march somehow. Uh, I'm not sure that you completely understand. Well, I know the kind of thing that you were talking about, and I don't want to get into it. What's that? Not to be disagreeing with you, but if there's something floating around between the priest and my son, it ain't my son's fault. I'm not suggesting that it is. Well, he's just a boy. I know. He's 12 years old. If anybody should be the blame, it should be the man, not the boy. I agree with you completely. You're agreeing with me, but I'm here in the principal's office. Why isn't the priest in the principal's office? If you know what I'm saying, you excuse my bringing it up. You're here because I'm concerned about Donald's welfare. <coughs> and you think I'm not? Of course you are. Let me ask you something. Do you really think the priest gave Donald that wine to drink? Yes, I do. 
So why did my son get kicked off the altar, boys, if it was the man that gave it to him? If the boy got caught, the man didn't. So why is the priest kicked out of the priesthood? He's a grown man, educated. He knows what's at stake. It's not so easy to pin someone like that down. So you give my son the whole blame. No problem, my son getting blamed and punished. That's easy, and you know what that is. Perhaps you should let me talk. I think you're getting upset. That's because that's the way it is. You're just finding out about it, but that's the way it is. Sister, you're not going against no man in a robe and win. Sister, he's got the position. And he's got your son. Well, let him have him then. What? It's just till June. Do you know what you're saying? I know more about it than you. I believe this man is creating, or has already brought about, an improper relationship with your son. I don't know. I know I'm right. Why do you want to know something like that when you don't? Please, sister. You've got some kind of righteous cause with this priest, and now you want to drag my son into it? My son doesn't need any additional difficulties. Let him take the good when he leaves this place in June. He knows how to do that. I taught him how to do that. What kind of mother are you? Excuse me, but you don't know enough about life to say a thing like that, sister. I know enough. You know the rules, maybe, but that don't cover it. I know what I won't accept. Who accept what you gotta accept? And work with it. That's what I know. Sorry to be so sharp. But you're here in this room and... This man is in my school! Well, he's got to be somewhere, doesn't he? And maybe he's doing some good, too. Did you ever think of that? He's after the boys! Well, maybe some of the boys want to get caught! Maybe what you don't know is... My son is that way. That's why his father beat him. Not the wine. He beat Donald for what he is. What are you telling me? I'm his mother. And I'm talking about his nature now. Not anything he's done. But you can't blame a child for what God has made him to be. Listen to me with care, Mrs. Muller. I am only interested in actions. It's hopeless to discuss a child's possible inclinations. Finding it difficult enough to address a man's deeds. This isn't about what the boy may be, but what the man is. It's about the man. But there's the boy's nature. Let's leave that out of it. Forget it then. You're the one forcing people to say things out loud. Things are in the air and you leave them alone if you can. That's what I know. My boy came to the school because they were going to kill him in the public school. And we were lucky enough to get him here his last year. Good. His father don't like him. And he comes here and kids don't like him. But one man is good to him. This priest, he puts out his hand to the boy. Does the man have his reasons? Yes, everyone has their reasons. And you have your reasons. My son needs some man to care about him and to see him through to where he needs to go. And thank God this educated man with some kindness wants to do just that! This will not do. It's just till June. Sometimes things aren't black and white. Sometimes they are. I will throw your boy out of this school. Make no mistake. Why would you do that if it didn't start with him? Because I will stop this whatever way I must. You hurt my son to get your way? It won't end with your son. There will be others if there aren't already. Throw the priest out then. I'm trying to do just that. So what do you want from me? Nothing. As it turns out, hoping you would know something that could help me. It seems you don't. Sister, please, leave my son out of this. His father would kill him over something like this. Uh, 
Come in. We would require a third party. What was Donald's mother doing here? We were having a chat. About what? A third party truly is required, Father. No, sister, no third party. You and I are due for a talk. You have to stop this campaign against me. You can stop it at any time. How? Confess and resign. I am. You are attempting to destroy my reputation. But the result of all this is going to be your removal, not mine. What are you doing in this school? I'm trying to do good. Or what to the point? What are you doing in the priesthood? You are single-handedly holding this school and this parish back. From what? Progressive education and a welcoming church. You cannot distract me, Father Flynn. This isn't about my behavior. It's about yours. But your unfounded suspicions. That's right. I have suspicions. You know what I never understood? Through all this, why do you suspect me? What have I done? Gave that boy altar wine, and you let him take the blame. That's completely untrue. Did you talk to Mr. McGinn? All McGinn knows is the boy drank wine. He doesn't know how he came to drink it. Did the boy's mother have anything to add to that? No. So that's it. There's nothing there. I'm not satisfied. Well, if you're not satisfied, ask the boy then. He'd protect you. That's what he's been doing. Oh, and why would he do that? Because you have seduced him. You're insane. You've got it in your head that I've corrupted this child after giving him wine, and there's nothing I can say that can change that. That's right. Correct me if I'm wrong. This has nothing to do with the wine, not really. You had a fundamental mistrust of me from before this incident. It, it was you that told Sister James to be on the lookout, wasn't it? That's true. So you admit it? Certainly. Why? I know people. That's not good enough. It won't have to be. And how's that? You will tell me what you've done. Oh, I will. Yes! I'm not one of your truant boys, you know. Sister James is convinced I'm innocent. So you talk to Sister James? Well, of course, you talk to Sister James. Did you know Donald's father beats him? Yes. And might that not account for the odd behavior Sister James noticed in the boy? It might. Then what is it? What? What did you hear? What did you see that convinced you so thoroughly? What does it matter? I want to know. Day of school. I saw you touch William Lemon's wrist, and I saw him pull away. That's it? That's all. That's nothing. What are you writing now? You leave me no choice. I, I, I'm writing down what you say. I, I tend to get too flustered to remember the details of an upsetting conversation, and this might be important when I talk to the Monsignor and explain why you have to be removed as the principal of the school. <sighs>
Trust me, I will. A parent who probably doesn't know that you are still working with children. And once I do that, you will be exposed. You may even be attacked, metaphorically or otherwise. You have no right to act on your own! You are a member of a religious order, you have taken vows! Obedience being one! You answer to us! You have no right to step outside the church! I will step outside the church if that's what needs to be done, though the door should shut behind me! I will do what needs to be done, Father, if it means I'm damned to hell! You should understand that, or you will mistake me. Now, did you give Donald Mother wine to drink? Have you never done anything wrong? I have. Mortal sin? Yes. And? I confessed it. Did you give Donald Mother wine to drink? Whatever I've done, I've left in the healing hands of my confessor. Uh, As have you. We are the same. <laughs> we are not the same. A dog that bites is a dog that bites. I do not justify what I do wrong and go on. I admit it, desist, and take my medicine. Did you give Donald Muller wine to drink? No. You lie. Very well then, if you won't leave my office, I will. Once I go, I will not stop. <coughs> Wait! You will request a transfer from this parish. You will take a leave of absence till it is granted. And do what? For the love of God, my life is here! Don't. Please, are, are we people? Am I a person, flesh and blood like you? Or are we just ideas and, and convictions? I, I can't say everything. Do you understand? There are things I, I can't say. Even if you can't imagine the explanation, sister, remember there are circumstances beyond your knowledge. Even if you feel certainty, it's an emotion and not a fact. In the spirit of charity, I appeal to you on behalf of my life's work. You have to behave responsibly. I put myself in your hands. I don't want you. My reputation is at stake. You can preserve your reputation. If you say these things, I won't be able to do my work in the community. Your work in the community should be discontinued. You'd leave me with nothing. That's not true. It's Donald Muller who has nothing. And you took full advantage of that. I have not done anything wrong. I care about that child very much. Because you smile at him and sympathize with him. Talk to him as if you were the same. That boy needed a friend. You are a cheat. That warm feeling you experienced when that boy looked up at you with trust was not the sensation of virtue. It can be got by a drunkard from his pot of rum. You, you are a disgrace to the caller. The only reason you haven't been thrown out of the church is a decline in vocation. I can fight you. You will lose. You can't know that. I know. Where's your compassion? Where you can get at it. Stay here. Compose yourself. Use the phone if you'd like. Good day, Father. I have no sympathy for you. I realize you are invulnerable to true regret. And cut your nails. This is Father Brendan Flynn of St. Nicholas Parish. I need to make an appointment to see the bishop.
that. Prayed for him. It, it was good to see my family. I, I needed to get away. It had been too long. Glad you did it then. And Father Flynn is gone? Yes. Where? St. Jerome's. So you did it? You got him out? Yes. Donald Muller is heartbroken that he's gone. Can't be helped. It's just till June. Well, did you ever prove it? Did I ever prove what? That he interfered with Donald Muller. To whom? Anyone but yourself. Uh, no. But you were sure? Yes. I wish I could be like you. Why? Because I can't sleep at night anymore. Everything seems so uncertain to me. Perhaps we're not supposed to sleep so well. They've made Father Flynn the pastor at St. Jerome's. Who? The bishop. The bishop appointed Father Flynn pastor of St. Jerome's church and school. It's a promotion. You didn't tell them. I told our good Monsignor Benedict across the garden, and I told him. He did not believe it to be true. Well, then why did Father Flynn leave? What did you say to make him go? That I had spoken to a nun in his previous parish, that I had found out his prior history of infringements. So you did prove it? I was lying. I made no such call. You lied? Yes. But if he had no such history, the lie wouldn't have worked. His resignation was his confession. He was what I thought he was. He's gone. I can't believe you lied. In the pursuit of wrongdoing, one steps away from God. Of course, there is a price. I see. So now he's in another school? Yes. Oh, Sister James. What is it, Sister? I have doubts. I have such doubts. Oh. Reputation be ruined. He was no matter what he would do. Yeah, it's a little tough. Think about it. I think this is about the Me Too movement. About the what? The Me Too movement. That's what's happening. Yeah. She mentioned it. She got there. Awesome people. Happy birthday! Before he took the place like rats, it's candy. Is that? Story to play for you. Is that his story or just a minute somebody read it? Oh, this is fun. It's not? No, I don't think it's a movie. I think it's a movie. I think it's a movie. Take me out for wine. We'll take my car. Yeah. Oh, did you tell him what the Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. No, but it, 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 it's, it's a... Oh, it's wait. A, well, we all know this. Oh, yeah. Now that I think about it, I'm not aware of it. That happened to us with the Scrogers. We were looking to be the bad person. Yeah. And it was because of stories yes. and things that we said that were out of our horse. You should live in the horse. It's 16. Were you surprised that I was screaming? See, look at the kids. <laughs> yeah, because he never he doesn't hear me in my voice. Like, the only time I scream is like to tell the boys from the top of the steps to do something. He's probably in there going, wait. That was right there. Like Marcus voice. Oh, <laughs> 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 yeah, that was different. Yeah, a little bit different. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Now, yes. Oh, okay. All right, I'll do that. Happy birthday. What time is it? It's on the way from good. I don't know if you got money or not. Denny's or something. Are you hungry? I guess I could eat. I'd like to talk about the city of you got to get me if she can ride here. She doesn't do it. I don't know. I don't know. She wanted to get up quite this year. Okay. That's what I'm doing. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. Yeah, I mean, I did it. At the playhouse in Pittsburgh, the children's 
there for years. There's, 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 so I'm like, look, that new little girl, she's really something. Because yeah. she's girl out, don't we? Like, like, aren't I supposed to be in the front? She's like, I'm like, and I'm like, yes. That's a wrap.